Invasive ductal carcinoma, often referred to as IDC, is the most common type of breast cancer. It accounts for about 80% of all breast cancer diagnoses. This is a type of breast cancer that starts in the milk ducts of the breast and spreads to surrounding breast tissue. To understand invasive ductal carcinoma better, it is important to first grasp the basic structure of the breast and how cancer develops within it. The breast is composed of lobules, which are milk-producing glands, and ducts, which are tiny tubes that carry milk from the lobules to the nipple. Invasive ductal carcinoma begins in the cells that line these milk ducts of the breast. This type of cancer cells can break through the wall of the duct and invade the surrounding breast tissue. So, they can enter the lymphatic system or bloodstream, potentially spreading to other parts of the body, which is a process known as metastasis. The term invasive means that the cancer has spread beyond its point of origin. This is different from ductal carcinoma in situ, where the cancer cells remain confined within the milk duct. Like what we said earlier, IDC is the most common type of breast cancer. It accounts for about 80% of all breast cancer diagnoses. To put this in perspective, about 1 in 8 women, or about 12%, will develop invasive breast cancer over the course of her lifetime. Of these, about 80% will be diagnosed with IDC. The American Cancer Society estimates that each year in the United States, about 287,850 new cases of invasive breast cancer will be diagnosed in women. The majority of these will be IDC. Causes of Invasive Ductal Carcinoma The exact causes of IDC, like many cancers, are not fully understood. However, researchers have identified several risk factors that can increase a person's likelihood of developing this type of breast cancer. Genetic factors play a significant role. Mutations in certain genes, particularly BRCA1 and BRCA2, can dramatically increase the risk of developing breast cancer, including IDC. These genes normally help repair damaged DNA. When they're mutated, they can't perform this function effectively leading to an increased risk of cancer. Age is another important factor. The risk of developing IDC increases as a woman gets older. Most breast cancers are diagnosed after age 50. This is why regular mammograms become increasingly important as women age. Hormonal factors also contribute to the development of IDC. Exposure to estrogen over long periods can increase the risk. This includes starting menstruation at an early age, entering menopause at a later age, or using hormone replacement therapy for extended periods. The link between estrogen and breast cancer is complex, but essentially, estrogen can stimulate the growth of some breast cancer cells. Other risk factors include obesity, lack of physical activity, alcohol consumption, and exposure to radiation. Being overweight or obese after menopause can increase breast cancer risk because fat tissue produces small amounts of estrogen. Regular physical activity has also been shown to lower breast cancer risk. Drinking alcohol can also increase risk, with studies showing that the more alcohol a woman drinks, the higher her risk of breast cancer. Finally, exposure to radiation, particularly to the chest area at a young age, can also increase risk. It's important to note that having one or more risk factors doesn't mean a person will definitely develop IDC. Many women with risk factors never develop breast cancer, while some women with no apparent risk factors do develop the disease. Symptoms of Invasive Ductal Carcinoma The symptoms of IDC can vary, and in its early stages, it may not cause any noticeable symptoms at all. This is why regular breast screenings are so important. However, as the cancer grows, it may cause several signs and symptoms. The most common symptom is a new lump or mass in the breast. This lump is often hard, irregular in shape, and painless, although some women may experience discomfort or pain. The lump might feel different from the surrounding breast tissue and doesn't go away. Other possible symptoms include changes in the size or shape of the breast, changes in the appearance of the breast skin, such as dimpling, redness, or texture similar to orange peel, and changes in the nipple. The nipple may become inverted, which means turned inward, or there might be discharge from the nipple, especially if it's bloody. Some women might experience persistent breast pain or tenderness 
that doesn't seem related to their menstrual cycle. In more advanced cases, there might be swelling in the arm on the same side as the affected breast, due to lymph node involvement. It's crucial to understand how these symptoms might feel. A breast lump might feel like a hard, immovable mass under the skin. It might not be painful when touched, but some women describe a feeling of heaviness or pressure in the breast. Skin changes might feel rough or uneven to the touch. Nipple discharge might be clear, bloody, or another color, and it often occurs without squeezing the nipple. While these symptoms can be alarming, it's important to remember that they don't always mean cancer. Many benign breast conditions can cause similar symptoms. However, any persistent changes should be evaluated by a healthcare provider. Diagnosis of Invasive Ductal Carcinoma Diagnosing IDC typically involves several steps and may include various imaging tests and a biopsy. The process often begins with a clinical breast exam, where a doctor carefully checks the breasts and underarm areas for any lumps or abnormalities. Mammography is a crucial tool in diagnosing IDC. This X-ray examination of the breast can detect tumors that are too small to feel. In a mammogram, IDC often appears as a mass with irregular edges or as clustered calcifications. However, mammograms aren't perfect, and some cancers can be missed, especially in women with dense breast tissue. If a suspicious area is found on a mammogram, additional imaging tests may be performed. These might include breast ultrasound, which uses sound waves to create images of the breast tissue, or magnetic resonance imaging, MRI, which uses magnetic fields to create detailed images of the breast. The definitive diagnosis of IDC requires a biopsy. This involves removing a small sample of breast tissue for examination under a microscope. There are several types of breast biopsies. A fine needle aspiration biopsy uses a thin needle to remove a small amount of tissue or fluid. A core needle biopsy uses a larger needle to remove several small cylinders of tissue. In some cases, a surgical biopsy might be necessary, where a larger piece of tissue is removed. Once a biopsy is performed, a pathologist examines the tissue under a microscope to determine if cancer cells are present. Further tests may be done on the biopsy sample to determine if the cancer cells have receptors for hormones like estrogen and progesterone, or for a protein called HER2. This information is crucial for planning treatment. Grading of Invasive Ductal Carcinoma If IDC is diagnosed, the pathologist will also determine the grade of the cancer, which helps doctors understand how aggressive the cancer is likely to be. This grading system is based on how different the cancer cells look from normal breast cells when viewed under a microscope. Grade 1 ADC, also called well-differentiated, means the cancer cells look somewhat similar to normal cells and are growing slowly. These cancers tend to have a better prognosis. Grade 2 ADC, or moderately differentiated, falls between grades 1 and 3 in terms of appearance and growth rate. Grade 3 IEC, also known as poorly differentiated, indicates that the cancer cells look very different from normal cells and are growing rapidly. Grade 3 cancers generally have a worse prognosis and may require more aggressive treatment. Treatment for invasive ductal carcinoma. Treatment for IDC typically depends on several factors, including the size and location of the tumor, the grade of the cancer cells, and whether the cancer cells have receptors for hormones or HER2. The patient's overall health and personal preferences are also taken into account. Surgery is usually the first line of treatment for IDC. There are two main surgical options, breast-conserving surgery, also called a lumpectomy, and mastectomy. In a lumpectomy, the surgeon removes the tumor and a small amount of surrounding healthy tissue. A mastectomy involves removing the entire breast. The choice between these options depends on factors, such as the size and location of the tumor, whether there are multiple tumors, and the patient's preference. Radiation therapy often follows surgery, especially after breast-conserving surgery. This treatment uses high-energy rays to kill any remaining cancer cells in the breast, chest wall, or underarm area. It's typically given five days a week for several weeks. Chemotherapy may be recommended, either before surgery to shrink the tumor, or after surgery to kill any cancer cells that might have spread beyond the breast. 
Chemotherapy drugs are usually given intravenously or orally and work by killing rapidly dividing cells, which includes cancer cells. Hormone therapy is often used for IDC, that is estrogen receptor positive or progesterone receptor positive, meaning that the cancer cells have receptors for estrogen or progesterone, which can fuel their growth. So, these therapies work by lowering estrogen levels or blocking estrogen's effects on breast cancer cells, thereby slowing or stopping the growth of the cancer. Common hormone therapies include tamoxifen and aromatase inhibitors. We also have targeted therapies, which are drugs that target specific molecules of cancer cells. For example, trastuzumab targets HER2-positive breast cancers. These therapies are often used in combination with other treatments. The side effects of these treatments can vary widely. Surgery can cause pain, swelling, and changes in breast appearance. Radiation therapy can cause skin irritation and fatigue. Chemotherapy, on the other hand, can cause nausea, hair loss, and increased risk of infections. Finally, hormone therapy can cause menopausal symptoms. Your healthcare team will work with you to manage these side effects and maintain your quality of life during treatment. Now, we want to hear from you. Do you or someone you know have invasive ductal carcinoma? What symptoms did you have at first? Share with us your experiences and opinions in the comments below. We love to hear them. Thanks for watching.